on the show tonight. It's welcome back to the great Tom Hanks. And this time, he's playing the grumpiest man alive. Is the world going mad? Let's start the show! <laughs> You are all so welcome to the show. Great guests for you tonight. I tell you, excitement levels are going over the top. <gasps> a bit like a Harry Kane penalty. Poor <laughs> oh, Harry. Still, at least the French were magnanimous in victory. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, it's the World Cup final on Sunday, Argentina versus France. Uh, everyone watching it? Everyone watching it? Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> it promises to be the biggest, fiercest international grudge match since Wales versus Sussex. <laughs> Chile, Chile, Netflix and Chile. Uh, now, this is our last show before Christmas, a bit earlier than normal, but we wanted to give the audience nine days to find a train home. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. I mean, everyone's on strike. Even the nurses came out yesterday. Oh, in response, Rishi Sunak offered hospital staff a 4% pay rise. Mmm. And that's him trying to get an appointment after they told him to shove it up his arse. <laughs> but hey, it's not all doom and gloom. Luckily, for this time of year, there's one cheerful old man with a beard who isn't going on strike. Mm hmm I'm still doing my show. <laughs> Hooray! Hey, let's get some guests on! Later, we'll have music from rising star Rina Sawayama. There she is. He's gone from pointless presenter to best-selling novelist. It's Richard Osman! <laughs> Why, there he is now! Hello, sir! Hello, sir! Hello, sir! Hello, She's the BAFTA-winning star who's taking the lead as Whitney Houston in the biopic I Want to Dance with Somebody. It's Naomi Aki! <laughs> She's one of our best-loved actors, star of Dr. Foster, Gentleman Jack, and Vigil. It's Saran Jones! <laughs> oh. She shimmers, she shines. Yeah. 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 Lovely to see you. Have a seat too. Okay. And he's the double Oscar-winning star of Forrest Gump, Philadelphia, Saving Private Ryan, and Toy Story, to name but a few. And he's one of our favorite guests. It is. Mr. Tom Hanks! And so nice to have you back in the studio, Tom. Last time it was on Zoom. How about that? From Australia, I yeah. Know. You guys were so separated, you know. You were like, uh, <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh, <laughs> my Lord! Stop! <laughs> <laughs> he, oh. looks, he looks better in person, right? He looks better. Oh. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> that looks like the guy who says, before I kill you, Mr. Bond, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a sad, sad, sad portrait. Uh, uh, <laughs> welcome to you, Saran. I think you're the only person who's ever come on the show and drank a generic Irish cream liqueur. Mm. Whoa. Well, yeah, so they said, what do you want? I said, oh, I'll have just a sparkling water. And then I heard that there were other Christmas drinks going, and being a nana, I said, oh, well, I'll have a Baileys, thanks. So nice. that's what I thought, I've got a Baileys. Well, I would have had a Baileys if I'd known there were Baileys See? on the way. <laughs> it's a generic Irish cream liqueur. Uh, oh, exactly. It's, but, but it's the most delicious <laughs> generic Irish cream liqueur. And a first-time welcome to Naomi Aki. Hello. Hi. Hi. And, uh, I'm so excited for you. Whitney Houston, and I want to dance with somebody, and you just had the big premiere in New York. Yeah, I just flew in today. Wow, oh. there, look at that for a red oh. carpet, look. Oh. Oh. 
that's, oh, so that, that's taking the world by storm, right there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what do, what do Americans make of meeting the woman playing Whitney Houston and then you speak with a British accent? Oh, they were really freaked out. <laughs> yeah, because I, <laughs> I, like, I had a... Um, accents don't come easy to me at all, so on set I would, I would be talking as Whitney, um, and then afterwards I'd be like, oh, bloody hell, that was a, <laughs> that was a hard day, in it? Oh, I'll tell you what, I, I, I don't know if I want to dance with somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dance. Well, congratulations. Thank we'll, talk, you. Well, we'll find out Thank more about you. it later on. And uh, talking of congratulations, let's keep it going because Richard Osmond just got married. This is his honeymoon. There they are. Oh, different suit. That's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Don't think it didn't go through my mind. Right? <laughs> oh, when was that? That was uh, third, so two weeks ago. Oh, two weeks ago. Yeah. You, should, you should know exactly when it was, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it was about two weeks ago. It was about two weeks ago. Yeah. 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 And did you go on honeymoon, or is this it? Yeah, we did. We yeah, we just got back from Venice. Again, you sound quite bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm I'm every really... mistake in the book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't be happier. And now, uh, you know, and then you get to meet Tom Hanks after your honeymoon. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have to cut it short. Again, again yeah. don't say that either. You <laughs> peaked. You peaked. That's it. It's, not, it's all downhill. Short. We, we had to cut it short by about a week and a half, but it was worth it. <laughs> Actually, you say that. You say that. I mean, lovely wedding picture there, mm. but it was missing one thing, and that was... Mr. Tom Hanks, you like to photobomb a wedding. Oh, I'll, I'll jump into that any chance. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Can you photobomb into mine? Uh, just tell me when and where. I'll just <laughs> I'll happen to be jogging by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do it. You do either jogging. Well, wait, it started in Rome, right? Yes, we, were, we needed to shoot. We were shooting uh, uh, Angels and Demons, and we were shooting in front of the Parthenon. Very famous. It is also a church. It's an ordained church. And there was a beautiful young couple that were getting married, and their limousines were in our shot. Oh. Uh. <clears throat> and Ron Howard said, I don't know what we're going to do. This wedding's going on. We can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take care of this. So I went up and knocked on the door. I said, young lady, you are very beautiful today on the wedding. Will you allow me to escort you to the altar? Oh. So she came out with her dad. We walked through the crowd, parted like the Red Sea. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Right? You know, I saw that picture earlier, and I was right. thinking, I really hope that is her dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we, I, we could... Get, well, there I am in my costume, and we got right up to the door to the Parthenon. We were not, yeah. as a movie people, we're not allowed inside. Oh. So off they went, and we, she made it to the church, Anton. She <laughs> made it to the church. Now, you like me coming over and doing that? And what have you... I made it to the church, Anton. Very good. Let's start with Tom's latest movie. It is called A Man Called Otto. And it opens here on the 6th of January. Uh, so, Tom, obviously, you play Otto. Who is Otto and, and why we're interested uh, in his story? Otto is a man who's uh, at the... He, he thinks... He, he has no faith in the future. He thinks he's lived it all, he's done it all, he's retired, he's alone, and he's ready to sort of cash it in. And then the worst possible thing happens... Fabulous people move across the street from another country. And he thinks, this is the last thing I want, is these people knocking on my door. And it turns out to be the greatest thing that ever happened to him. And this is based on, on a Swedish book, A Man Called Ove. And then there was a film that... So did oh. you see that Swedish film before you All said right. yes so to this? So six years ago, we're watching... A, uh, if you're a member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and <laughs> Sciences... <laughs> yes. ...or BAFTA, one of the two, you get, um, you get free DVDs. Yeah. Back when you still had a DVD player in your house. Anybody still the DVD player? <laughs> yeah. Those that kids right? scratching their heads. <laughs> what is and we saw this, and uh, Rita's... The, my wife, Rita, produced it as well. She was on set producer, and I was watching... It's a, this movie is fantastic. It has a performance by a man named uh, uh, Rolf uh, 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 Losgard, who, uh, who played Uva, mm. which is in this... And, and I was thinking, this is a fantastic... This is really... I wonder if this could work in America. And just as this was going through my head, Rita said to me, we have to make this movie in America! <laughs> you have to play this guy! I said, well, let me see. <laughs> so uh, we did, and we were just in Sweden. We were in Stockholm last night. Oh, and wow. this, this was, if honestly, if the Swedes don't like what you've done to their national mm -hmm. treasure, mm. this is a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. And they actually appreciate it. It's not. It's a very much a, uh, an American movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, in fact, said, uh, 
to our to our, our cracker to Mark Forster, who directed it, and all the producers. I said, "There's already been a man called Uva. There's been a great performance by an actor playing a man called Uva. So I will be playing a man called Otto in a movie called A Man Called Otto." Yeah. And they said, "How do you spell that?" <laughs> <laughs> O T T O. I said, oh, well, we thought we thought you said A U T O. So that actually. <laughs> no. Um, weirdly, that, that's just about been our clip. Uh, we've got a clip. Oh. This, is, this is this is you as Otto uh, being very grumpy to your new neighbours, played by Manuel Garcia Rolfo and Mariana Trevino. 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 In yay. Hey. Hi. Otto. Right? Yes? Otto. Yeah, that's what I said. No? Okay, okay. What did I it say? It doesn't matter what you said. Otto. O T T O. Ah. Otto. Otto. Oh, Otto. Oh, okay, so it's the same forward that is backwards. No, no, say Otto. Otto. It's Otto. Mm. It's just you don't hear that name Otto. very often. Uh -huh. I do. Okay. If we're interrupting, we can always come back. What is it you want? I brought you some pollo con mole. Why? Because you looked hungry. <laughs> anyway, we just, uh, we wanted to properly introduce ourselves because, you know, we're going to be neighbors and everything, so, yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Bye. Are you always this unfriendly? I'm not unfriendly. Okay, you're not. No, no, no. You're not unfriendly. Every word you say is like a warm cuddle. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tom, I wonder, in this movie, is it nice to release your inner grouch? Oh, it's fantastic. Just, uh, <laughs> it, it, now, but see, okay. In my, in my family, I, I, I have two phrases that the whole family knows. The first one is, uh-oh, dad is boiling. Ooh. Okay. Dad is boiling. Mm. And that phrase is, all right, let me, let me get this straight. Oh. Ooh. You ever do this, you know? Let me, oh, oh, I see. Oh, I see. Let me get this straight. You, la, 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 but I, do do li That means dad's going there. All of us have Oh, no, we Tom Hanks has been being <laughs> The second half is, why would it work for me? And that means I've gone over the edge. Oh. Oh. Why would it work for me? Why would it work oh. for me? Oh. The entire world picks up the remote oh. and watches a Graham Norton show anytime they want to. Why would it work for me? I'll tell you why. <laughs> because the remote says, menu, press, source, on, subject A, subject B, red button, yellow button. None of this turns on the TV. That's me at home, because why would it work for me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, have, have some generic Irish <laughs> yeah. I have a six-year-old that said to me when I left the house, are you going to meet Woody? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And, 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 and oh, poorly no, no, have you. Woody. Yeah. 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 Angry oh, Woody. Angry. <laughs> <laughs> Woody wasn't happy today. <laughs> had to press any remote, so I had to <laughs> But everyone has, everyone has things that trigger them. Saran, have you got things that set you off? The biggest thing, it feels a bit weird to say this on a talk <laughs> show, but it, it, a public lose and the state of public lose. Like, you know, if you've, you've been on a flight or you, you've mm. been wherever, you really need the loo, you just want it to be clean. Mm -hmm. mm. So maybe this should be a public announcement of <laughs> if you've done your business mm. and it hasn't flushed right or whatever, mm. try again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm so sorry to... Let me get this straight. But... <laughs> Exactly you know, like, yeah. like, and it's women's toilets. It's really bad. It's really bad. I've yeah. seen... Try men's. Oh. <laughs> you kind of expect it of men. Not that you expect it of men, but you know... You expect it of men. I mean, you know, but, but ladies, you would think that would yeah, clean up that they be don't, some, do no, they? No, they really mm. don't. That's I've like sometimes things. if women ever are forced to use men's toilets in an emergency and they just go, oh, that was disgusting. You go, yeah, I know. We've had to use them our entire oh. lives. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, you have a thing that, that upsets you. Well, I've got... It's fee. Feet? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> no, but it We're is... all I'm feet. Trauma... Yeah, no, nah, cos it's like when it touches me. Like, OK. So my dad used to torture me with, with his feet. 
when I was a kid. Okay. <laughs> this has turned dark. All yeah. <laughs> He did it. It's just like, you know, we'd be watching TV, you know, I'm like eight years old and he'd be like, nay. And I'd like turn around the sofa and his foot is just like... <laughs> <laughs> <Right here. laughs> um, and it's distressing. I had once I, um, oh, a birthday sleepover and one of my friends, I was sat on the floor, one of my friends was sat on the sofa and she put her foot on my face and then scrunched up her toes. <laughs> <laughs> I kicked her out of my house. <laughs> You've got to have rules. You've got yeah, to have you rules. have to have yeah. boundaries. Yeah. It's important. <laughs> and, 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 Tom, uh, one of your sons, Truman, yes. is in this film playing the younger... Young version of me, yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. My son. Now, but if he's, you... he's not the actor in the family. No, he is. He's an artist. He's, uh, he's going to be a cinematographer. He loves work. He's been carrying around a camera since he was 13 years old and developing his own film. Uh, Mark Forster, who is the director... He says, uh, he's, he's Swiss, and he says, well, you know, we're going to have to cast a young version of you. <laughs> too, bad you're, too bad you have two kids that are too old. My, my son Colin and okay. Chester are too old to play. Today. But what about your youngest? Can I meet him? He said, well, he doesn't want to be an actor. I don't care. Can I meet him? Maybe I can talk him <laughs> to doing it. Because then I won't have to uh, audition a bunch of people who look like you. <laughs> <laughs> so we did, and our DNA actually matches, and he made his feet with it, and it's, <laughs> it matches, it does. Oof, yeah, <laughs> That would have made me mad. Let me get this straight. Uh, uh, look, I thought it was extraordinary in it. Yeah. yeah. So I, the, what I always say to the kids as they grow up, it's great work if you can get it, but you got to make it stick. Yeah, so follow, yeah, yeah. follow what you want to do. Okay. But I, his his passion really is looking, shaping the shot as yeah, opposed yeah. to being into the shot. But he, he can do either. Well, you can see Truman and you can see Tom as a man called Otto in cinemas from the sixth of January. Tom Hanks, everybody. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good call. Good call. I haven't finished my generic team. <laughs> and uh, weirdly, Tom is not the only person playing someone grumpy. Saran Jones brings us Christmas Carol. Uh, this is uh, the updated Dickens. It's Skymax Christmas Eve at 8 o'clock. And you play Christmas Carol with an E. So uh, how does this take on, on the Dickens work? Um, so I was doing Gentleman Jack and I was sat in the chair, the makeup chair, and I said, the next thing I want to do is a Christmas film. I want mm. to make something that my son, who's six, can mm. watch. And um, because there, he hasn't really been able to watch a lot of my yeah. things. <laughs> um, uh, so, so... Um, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good mother. Good. Yeah. Yes, this is what Mummy does, that you can watch. Mm. Um, it's Christmas Eve, it's A Tale of Christmas Carol, mm. and it's, it's just... But look, who, who is it. Christmas Carol with an E? Oh, so she has um, this company that makes awful Christmas decorations and Christmas produce mm. and sells it for lots of money mm. and she just rips everyone off, basically. So there is actually a sustainability uh, thread <laughs> that goes through. There is. Well, there is. <laughs> there is. There and it is. really well, actually. Mm. Um, so we have the ghosts, as you can see. Yeah. So that's Ghost of Christmas Past, which is Malcolm and Wise. Mm. Uh, Joe Brand, mm. uh, with her golden loo brush, is present. And she plays Joe Brand. She plays Joe Brand, yeah. yeah. Um, and then Nish Kumar on the end, who's the um, ghost of Christmas future. So all comedians, they're just brilliant. They really are. This is a clip, and in fact, it is Christmas Carol meeting Morecambe and oh, Wise. Oh, Here they are. Excuse me, young sir. We're looking for the one they call Christmas Carol. That's me. Told you well. He thought you were Des O'Connor. Yeah. You're actually Eric Morecambe. Oh, yes. And he's only wise. Delighted to meet you, Miss Christmas. But you're both dead. She's quick. I'll give her that. What's happened to me? She hasn't got it yet, has she? No. I don't think she has. We're the ghosts of Christmas past, Sammy. <gasps> So Nish plays Nish, Joe plays Joe, but Morecambe and Wise are played by John T. Stevens, and is it Ian Ashpital? Yes. Now, they are amazing. So is this amazing. what they do? Yeah. So, um, I'd actually already seen them 
in um, a theatre. So when me and my husband got married, we actually did the Morecambe and Wise dance. So, cool. um, <laughs> so, so, the, so we got married on our own. Was Tom there? Uh, Tom oh. wasn't there. Oh, yes, that's yeah, that's there. That's the Morecambe and Wise dance. Yes, yeah. me and Lauren. So, uh, so we got married on our own um, and mm. we played Bring Me Sunshine. So when mm. we came out, like, two seconds after this picture, I fell over the dress. You can just see. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and Lawrence was like, oh, my God. Um, so I took him for our first anniversary to see Ian and John T in their show. And they're not in any way, like... Um, it, they're not doing um, a, a parody of them or anything. It's not a, a tribute act. Mm. They're so good. And the, the, the song Bring Me Sunshine, which you had at your wedding, yep. also very popular in Richard Osman's house. It wasn't at your wedding. No, it wasn't. It was my, yeah, my first song on Desert Island Discs. So I was thinking about television, how much I love television, how much it's me meant to me and how much it means to us as a country. Mm. And that song and those two people brought the country together in a way, perhaps will never be brought together again, if, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. And everyone loved them, and everyone understood where it came from. They came from the music hall and from, you know, vaudeville mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and came through into this incredible new world. So they sort of, they held us all together for years, and that one song is the one song, I think, when you think about television, you think about entertainment, you think about joy, that's the song you think yeah. about. Yeah. So if you didn't have that at your wedding, mm. what did you have at your wedding? I, I walked on, I, I had my own entrance. Uh, I, I walked <laughs> on to... Didn't you? Oh, my wow. God. Yeah. Wow. But listen, I didn't have Tom Hanks. I had to have Tom Hanks. <laughs> uh, I walked on to Lose Yourself by Eminem. <laughs> you only get one shot, do not wow. miss the chance to blow oh, that one. Yeah. Palms are sweaty, all that kind of yeah. stuff. I walked in on the beat and it got such a huge cheer. It was great. <laughs> my wife, who was in a little ante room, said I was nervous and then I heard this enormous cheer and I thought everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Uh, so that was lovely. And then she walked on to the long and winding road and the whole place just absolutely oh, disintegrated. Aww. So it was lovely. Aww. And then we walked into our wedding breakfast to um, Let's Get Ready to Rumble by PJ and Duncan. So we lost, <laughs> we lost a lot quite of goodwill. Quite the playlist. Yeah. 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 Tom, did you have any special songs at your wedding? I fought for um, the theme to On Her Majesty's Secret Service sung by Louis <laughs> Armstrong. <laughs> we have all oh. the time in the world, time yeah. of the love. Uh, but uh, <laughs> my wife chose True Love Ways by the... Uh, oh. Uh, by the oh. oh, beautiful. And, uh, Naomi, obviously yeah. you're planning your wedding. Tom's booked. Of course. Uh, yeah. have, you got, have you got any songs in your back pocket? Oh. <laughs> 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 you... My head, but I won't yeah. share it. OK. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, here she comes. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be what, what, good. The, what, what's yeah. the, 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 the notes. She's a man who's money. Oh, 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 she's a man who's money. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, use that. Yeah, yeah oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The groom is standing at the yeah, altar. <laughs> I came on to, I will always love you. You're coming on to this. Yeah. If I was officiating that wedding yeah. and you came into Man Eater, I would say, dude, yeah. get out of here. Run! <laughs> run! Run, run. And, and, and Scrum, as you say, your, your son can watch this, so has he seen it yet? Yeah, he came to the screening. It was the first time that he was able to come to a screening, so he was um, he was quite excited. And but he managed to sit through the whole thing. And he said, "Yes, mummy, it was very good." Oh, yes. Few, it's few, exactly. Few. Yes. Yeah. The reviews are in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then he had a lot of sugar, and he fell on the floor, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, gentleman Jack is obviously quite adult. Could he not have watched? Could he not have watched Vigil? <gasps> he, oh, oh, well, with Vigil, I said, "Mummy gets uh, put on a helicopter." and then dropped onto a submarine. So I showed him that bit. And then it got a bit violent, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. that bit is ah. great. Yeah. And that yeah. is really you. But are, is that happening? Are you being lowered onto a submarine? No, Graham, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, so when I read scripts, so yeah. I get so excited. And then with this one, I, I immediately went, oh, I really want to do it because I had a vision that I would be not thinking about insurance, mm. obviously. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to be in a helicopter and I'm going to get dropped in the middle of the North Sea. Or... And I was in a car park <laughs> of a supermarket um, on, a, <laughs> on a crane. We've got a picture. This is this is the reality. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's fake. Yeah. It's fake. Oh, no, I don't want to know. It's fake. No. I don't want to know. And when I got to the bottom, there was a man here underneath the crane that threw um, a load of water on me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would watch that, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with a live fish in it. Yeah, just basically. <laughs> Did they call lunch when you were right up at the top? It's <laughs> lunch! Uh... Do you know when they're checking takes and stuff and you don't hear oh, anything? Yeah. And you're yeah. like, well, yeah. did you like it or not? Yeah. 
So I was up there when I, you know, I'm like, oh, did we, are we going again or what, what we did doing? Did they give you any direction up there? Can you have more of a look in your eye that says what's happening to me or something? I mean, how do they direct you they up there? They kept saying, spin, spin round to the camera. Uh. Oh, because you can control that's the camera there. <laughs> There's a video of me doing like a ballet dance. <laughs> Just my <laughs> like, like, oh, actually, is it true around they're gonna make an, an, another vigil? Uh, they are, but not with submarines. I was gonna say, oh, yes, no. It no. wouldn't be that stupid. No, no, <laughs> she'd get getting locked in places and everyone kept dying. No, no, that bit when else. you were in the tube, that was so scary. That was yeah. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Uh, yeah, and I did I was submerged actually in the tube. I think you forget that actually at any moment you can just say, can I get out? <laughs> so I, 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 you get so into it. That's why stunt people should do stunts and actors shouldn't because, yeah. you know. Wow. Yeah. Well, we look forward to Vigil too, and you can see Saran in Christmas Carol on Christmas Eve. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is exciting. Naomi Aki is Whitney Houston in I Want to Dance with Somebody. Mm. It opens everywhere on Boxing Day. And this is a, a big deal. It's the first yeah. uh, biopic. It's been authorised by her family, yeah. but also Clive Davis, executive yeah. producer. Mm. So yeah. with all those people involved in casting you. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I didn't know at the time. <laughs> it's just like, I was just doing throwing self-tapes and being like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and then see what happened. But yeah, they they were, and it was really great because you know I got to talk to them all the way through the whole process. And um, you know, Clive, I went to his house when I arrived in the US and we had a lovely lunch, and then we went to his cinema room and sat and, and watched Whitney's live performances, and I was just like, wow. like you're Clive, and Thank I'm you. I'm me. And then <laughs> like, I'm just there with like a notepad mm. while he's like pointing out all the things he found special in her live performances, and I, uh, you know. Working with them, I tried to make sure I did that. Wow. So, cool. Yeah. And listen, yeah. The, the clip we have is one of her kind of the highlights of her career. Yeah. It's that amazing performance she did of the national anthem at the Super Bowl. So this is Naomi Aki <laughs> as Whitney Houston. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So gallant, least dreaming, and the rockets rattle. The rockets rattle. Yeah, yeah, hit that, hit that, yeah. in a Sainsbury's car park, was it? No. <laughs> no. Wow. wow. Uh, such yeah. an epic performance. And, God, Americans do do those we things remember really every, well. You can ask an American. They all remember that moment yeah. of watching her sing, because everybody yeah. watches the Super Bowl and everybody that saw that, that clip. Yeah. yeah. And, and the voice, the singing, it's, it's a lot of it's Whitney, but yeah. you were kind of mixed in as well. Yeah, so there was a kind of question about how to morph into Whitney's voice, because we do do some songs from when she's a lot younger and things we don't know about in that area. So I, I took about, like, one and a half of the songs at the beginning. Yeah. And then, you know, Whitney. <laughs> 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 and then, and, you know, and then, you know, for some dramatic beats and stuff, I, I filled in some of those spaces, but hopefully by that point, you know, you're along for the ride and you understand what the what the rules are. And I notice, her, so her, Whitney's teeth are not your teeth. Yeah, I got a gap. 
Yeah. So what? <laughs> what was? What was? <laughs> what were they? Were they painted in or were they...? No, they were fake. They were like flippers. We had one on the bottom, one on the top. Um, and, like, I had been working on the accent for about uh, six months. Um, and I thought, I was like, OK, I've got the accent down. Like, I think I've got this. And then suddenly you put the teeth in mm -hmm. and it's like relearning it mm. <laughs> all over again because it's... <laughs> <laughs> so it took, it took a second to get used to. And, of course, I don't know about you guys, but at the end of the film, when you, you realise it's ten years yeah. since Whitney died, I had no yeah. idea it was ten years. It feels long, but also quite a short amount yeah. of time. You know? Yeah. And, of course, it was that... Uh, the, the oddest of circumstances with that Grammy party. And, yeah. Tom, were you at that Grammy? I, Yes, we the, we were going because there, it's one of those. Every now and again, you get invited to a party. Say, I cannot miss this because yeah. everybody who has ever been a fabulous singer mm. is at yeah. this. But because the news, I mean, the news had broken lo in Los yeah. Angeles. It was yeah. like an earthquake. It's like we couldn't believe. It. And the question was, do we still have this? And because Clive Davis, yeah. it, he said, absolutely, we, we are not going yeah. to not celebrate the yeah. life of this woman. The yeah. it was it was quite a profound uh, get together. I yeah. yeah, I can't I imagine. And Naomi, having yeah. done this film mm -hmm. and being Whitney, like, what mm. can you listen to Whitney now? Yeah, I had to take a break. I won't lie, because um, I was very like obviously really immersed in the world. So I came home and definitely was just like, all right, Whitney, like, we'll give you a second. But now, it's really like, I actually listen to it to remember some of the moments I had oh, filming. Wow. Like, it was such a kind of formative time in my life and in my career that I, I look back on it fondly, mm. yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank and you, you can see Naomi in I Want to Dance with Somebody from Boxing Day. Boxing Day. Hey. Boxing Day. <laughs> well, you know a lot. I've got a Christmas Eve, I've got to watch yours. Yeah. And the day after Christmas, I've got to watch yours. Yeah. Because in the States, you don't go Boxing Day anything, do you? We think Boxing Days is where the families finally break off the fisticuffs <laughs> working out their problems. Well, often yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> that is too bad, also, Boxing often, Day. Yeah, about that. Uh, right, uh, good news, murder mystery lovers. Richard Osman has written a new book, uh, The Bullet That Missed. It is the third in the Thursday Murder Club series. Uh, so tell us about this one. Same cast of characters. Same group of people, four detectives in their 70s. They all live together in a retirement community, look over old unsolved cases one day there's a real murder they team up and they solve it and essentially we're on the third book now mm. uh, and this one every time I release a new one I think this this is going to be where people find me out but so far <laughs> this seems to be the most popular of all which which is which is lovely and lots of this is set in the world of television funnily enough some of it is in the world of local news mm. you know anytime you see any local news wherever you are in the country yeah. there's always a guy in his 70s mm -hmm. and a woman in her 20s <laughs> so this is about the guy in his 70s who, who Joyce who is our, our hero, is, is, uh, essentially has a crush on. And so mm -hmm. they, they, they start investigating. But yeah, there's loads in telly. There's even, a, there's even a quiz show in there as well. Oh. Yeah, you've got to write what you know. And here's the thing. So you wrote the first two kind of uh, under the radar, yeah. in, in a way. Mm -hmm. So this is the first one you've written knowing what an enormous mm -hmm. hit the franchise is. Mm -hmm. So did that give you confidence or did it freak you out a bit? I kind of loved it, is the truth. I, I've had a whole career in television. You guys, you know, you have an awful lot of flops if you're in a creative business. Yeah. And you have very yeah, few speak hits. speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 not, not, not over here, baby. Not over here. Did you not see the submarine? <laughs> I have had a lot of flops in my career. <laughs> One of the nicest things you can have is a hit. And as, as, as I'm writing it, listen, when I'm writing, I'm, I'm just in the room, the door is shut, all I've got is the cat on the oh. keyboard and I'm trying to write. So then, then I'm with the characters. But knowing that people are going to read it and knowing that people want to read it and knowing that people want to find out what happens to the characters is a joy. And Joyce, who, who, who writes the diary in this, I honestly find myself when I'm writing it, as she is writing, I think, do you know what, Joyce? People love you. You're doing <laughs> such a great job. Oh, and it's so, lovely. It's so, it's yeah, so yeah, lovely yeah, yeah, to, be, yeah. to, to be in her brain and to, yeah. yeah. And how does uh, Mother Osmond feel about book number three? Yeah, she's... I mean, the, the book is entirely based... She lives in a retirement community. Mm. And so it was... When I, when I would meet the people there who just had these incredible life stories, I thought, I've got to team you up as detectives. She is, she is fine with it now. I think the first one, she was worried for legal reasons that, that I was going to be talking about her friends. <laughs> but any time I go down and visit <clears> now, <throat> they are very, very much on board. When I go down there, they all pitch me ideas for murder. <laughs> <laughs> they re the, honestly, they're terrible. I was down there, she's got two friends, honestly, they're called Peggy and Sue. Uh, <laughs> and I was down there recently. Like, you know, I was down there because we were filming for the 10 o'clock news. 
They were all just being interviewed for the 10 o'clock news, all dressed up, line dancing. Uh, and, and Peggy said to me, oh, just one second. Um, you know, there's, there's a concert hall here and they're thinking of shutting it down and turning it into flats. That could be a plot, couldn't it? And I was like, mm, yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and then Sue could see maybe I wasn't buying it. And she said, there's a balcony at the end of the concert hall. You could push someone off that and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Now we have a plot. She's beautiful. So she's at tech producing the new movie. Yep. <laughs> and Saran, you're halfway through this, is that right? Uh, no, actually, can I have that? <laughs> <laughs> you're hiding it. Because you want it. Well, I'm, maybe. No, I just want Richard to sell books. Oh, yes. Okay, okay I'll buy the book. Maybe my husband out. could buy it for Christmas. There's, there you a, go. there's a Waterstones on Pickett. Yes, exactly. I'll just go. I think Saran can have one. Thank you. I've read one and two. I love Joyce. Like, Joyce oh. is like, when she does her diary entries, oh, I love Elizabeth. She's very kick ass, but yes. I think oh. I'm more of a Joyce. Would so. you be a Peggy or a Sue? When <laughs> ah, oh, I, I, I'd be a Peggy, I guess. If I'm a Joyce. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Um, but yeah, that's Can so I play good. the person who's pushed off the balcony? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, there's a role for all three of you in the movie. I'll play that. <laughs> so long as you this can... is why we do Graham yeah. Show. Yeah. 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 As long as you can do Cockney. <laughs> oh, watch oh, this. Let me be that American who comes in. Well, I think I'll get me to the church on time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Wrong. Yeah, that's exactly. your wrong right now. Yeah. Next up, uh, yeah. the yearly panto. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, you're also turning novelist. You've yeah. got a book out, is it next spring? It will be out in May, yes, yes. Wow. It's called uh, The Making of Another Major Motion Picture Masterpiece, Write What You Know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because I, I, I've read uh, a number of books about the making. No one knows how we do this. Yeah. Everybody assumes they know how to thought. It is so cockamamie, the way you get a movie from somebody's idea to the finished mm. screen. That yeah. I invested about 480 pages pages and about nine quarts of blood. Don't yeah. you find oh, that every now and again so you sit down to write. It? Oh, dear. <laughs> really difficult. Everybody says, how do you write books? I says, I write books like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so serious. Oh. <laughs> Away, so, yeah. But if that happened on a Tuesday, that couldn't happen on the Monday. Oh, 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 oh. You, do you forget the character's name sometimes? Uh, I had a guy that was named my Diego, I'm a, I'm a professional and author. at page 300, I changed his name to Francisco, <laughs> and no one knew. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go back. Get... I said, who was Francisco? Well, oh, Diego, yeah, sorry about that. You get so. proofreaders who are the best people in the whole world, because if you make any mistake at all, their job is to, to pick it up. They're so brilliant. The only time, so everything, like what time a train is from sort of Paulgate to London, mm. and they'll say, Oh, by the way, there isn't, there's no longer a trolley there service a, on that train. You think, oh, that's useful. The only time I ever got in trouble was in the first book. So they checked everything, everything. And in the first book, I talked about uh, the Waitrose in Tunbridge Wells, right? And no one thought to check that because, of course, Tunbridge Wells has got a Waitrose. They haven't. They haven't got a Waitrose. And if you think they were furious before about that, <laughs> after I wrote. And in this new book, I send Joyce to Tunbridge Wells. She goes on a day trip. And when she's there, she went, I'm sure I read somewhere that there was a waitress here, but there was <laughs> <laughs> so I my apology to the people of Tombridge Wells. Well, I'm so sorry. Where will Saran be able to shoot the next season? <laughs> <laughs> the Tombridge Wells little. OK, good. Oh, <laughs> lovely. And Richard, I see at the back of the book you can pre-order uh, book four. You can, yeah. Uh, but uh, am I, I right? mean, I wouldn't, cos I haven't finished it yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, am I right thinking that, that, that you're having a little pause with the Thursday Murder Club at that point? Yeah, so that, that, that'll be four. I, I will go back to it, but I want, I want to write maybe a different sort of crime thing, a slightly more Da Vinci Code-esque type thing. There are certain things the Thursday Murder Club can't do. They can't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They can't, they, yeah, they can't kick down doors into warehouses Fair. and shoot people, and I'd, I'd quite yeah. like to, to write a book where they do that. So, yeah, I've got a book called We Solve Murders, which is about a detective duo who sort of traverse the world Solving murders that, that that no one else can. A man and a woman. A man and a woman. A and, saucy and, American and, and a plucky <laughs> Brit. <by the way. laughs> and, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, yeah, hold on a minute. I'm an assistant. I could be the assistant. I'm afraid Graham is playing the cop. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me remind you, uh, book three in the Thursday Murder Club series, The Bullet That Missed, is out now. Well, Excellent. So good. All right. Honestly.
Why can't I pre-order book five and six? Oh, now? So That's so what I'd like to <laughs> be able to free. put pressure on you. <laughs> Keep typing. And right, it is time for music. This singer-songwriter had one of the albums of the year with Hold the Girl. Here performing the title track, it is Rina Sawayama. <laughs> Wowza, wowza. Uh, that is something else. Wow. Thank you. Just a great, great performance. And that is off the album of the same name. Yes. And uh, congratulations on the success of the album. Thank you so much. Brilliant. And uh, we, we saw the amazing choreography there. And, like, and God, you can do that rarest of thing. You can sing and dance at the same time. Oh, God, just about. Thank you. Well, yeah, yeah you're young. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but the, the choreography has now got you into the world of film. Yes, so I've always shot music videos and kind of part directed it with the view that I want it to be my acting portfolio. 
<laughs> so I've like purposefully <laughs> written characters for myself. <laughs> and there's a video called Excess and Bad Friend where I do like some stunt choreography and I like I pretend I'm like a robot like breaking down, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. And then I what well, I got a call from Chad Stahelski, who is the director of John Wick. And <gasps> yeah. And I was like, <laughs> Name is like, get out of town. No, I know. <laughs> That's what I felt like. And I was just stupid Whitney Houston. <laughs> 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 and then, and then, so they, we got a call, and then I was like, "Why the hell does, does he want to speak to me?" And he goes, "I've seen your music videos, and I've got a perfect role for you. Do you want to come to Berlin and shoot for the new John Wick?" <gasps> I know. So, have you done it? I've done it. I've done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. The like hardest thing I've ever done. Oh and that God. is easy compared to John Wick. Well, are you fighting Keanu or fighting with Keanu? Oh, oh no, the secret! Am I a goodie or a baddie? Who oh, knows? Oh, who knows? Oh, are you in John Wick 5? Mm. Okay. Is there a John Wick 5? Oh, no. <laughs> we don't know. I know, no, no. I know I'm in John Wick 5 and I haven't seen your set, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you're in the middle of a tour, and I mean, this is so many, it's a world tour. Yeah, it's my first world tour. I mean, my, I released my debut album in uh, 2020, and so couldn't tour for two years. Yeah. And then now it's all opened up, going touring, doing Australia, New Zealand, and Japan. And some of my wow. family have never seen me live, so it's going to be quite... Uh, and this is family in Japan? Yeah. yeah, yeah, most of my family live in Japan. OK, so yeah. they've been watching your music videos and thinking, wow, she looks good. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> like, well, this is, this is going pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but have you written any novels? <laughs> <laughs> Next you know she will. Oh, you know. <laughs> no, actually, she'll probably crank out two of them on the world tour. Yeah, yeah just don't... on the tour bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I finished one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a bestseller. Uh, listen, uh, congratulations on everything. Thank you. And thank you so much for that spectacular performance. Thank uh, you. Rina Zoyama, everybody! Yeah. Rina, so, so, so good. Thank you so much. And that is nearly it. Before we go, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who is there? Oh, hello. Oh, oh. Oh, you've amused yourself. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wondering how I got here. <laughs> oh, calm down. You'll be fine. Uh, what's, your, what's your name? Um, Alice. Oh. Alice. Hello, Alice. Alice. Do you know Alice? No. Oh, right. <laughs> and, uh, where are you from, Alice? Um, originally Manchester, but live down here oh. now. All right. What... Oh, I might do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what, do you, what do you do down here, Alice? Oh, um, I work in project management for the NHS. OK, oh, see, yes. very yeah. good. You like, see, suddenly, yeah. very hard to flip now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really yeah. Hard. yeah. 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 I do, I do something luck. very good to help yeah. people. Yes. <laughs> Don't flip me. Um, <laughs> off you go with your story, Alice. Good luck. So I was about 16 watching the Ryder Cup with my dad, mm. and Tiger Wood kind of brings the ball to his lip, his golf ball, and... Um, <laughs> And then he just said, oh, they can't do that at the local golf club anymore because they're putting insecticide down. <laughs> so I was like, oh, OK, nice tidbit. And then we go to the golf club later <laughs> and I'm sat with all my dad's mates who are old and I don't know what to say to them. And um, I just came out with, oh, I heard you're not allowed to lick your balls anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so the old men all erupt. I sit there going red. My dad doesn't look at me for a week. Oh, you can walk out. You can walk out. Well, if you'd like to have a go in the next show yourself and tell your story, you can. Contact us via website with this very address. A please say a huge thank you to all of my guests tonight. Rina Sawayama! <laughs> Richard Osmond! <laughs> Stars, Callum Scott Howells and Madeline Brewer, comedian Ramesh Ranganathan, Lioness Captain Leah Williamson, comedy great Hugh Laurie, Top Boys Michael Ward, and Oscar winner Olivia Coleman. On the land, have a very happy Christmas. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>